Okay, welcome to lecture three. And lecture three is called the Solute Effect. And in college and later on in this year, you'll sometimes hear this referred to as the colligative property effect um, or colligative properties in general. But because lecture three is not going to be on any quiz or the unit test, just in um, topics that will be covered in tomorrow's lab, um, I'm gonna call it the solute effect because it makes a little bit more sense to me. Okay, so let's go through and let's look at the concepts involved here. And this relates directly to molarity in the following way. Now we know that molarity involves solutions made by dissolving a solute in a solvent, usually water. So let's look at a solvent here, generic solvent. And here are the solvent particles, okay, randomly distributed in their liquid form, blah, blah. Usually it's water held loosely together by these polar hydrogen bonds. Um, and let's talk about what's happening at the surface here. Now at the surface, some of these particles are actually moving faster than the particles down here at the bottom where they contain more kinetic energy. And what happens is a small amount of these particles actually vaporize. Okay, or we can term this quote unquote boil, just a small amount of them. So even though water looks like it's a liquid, it is a liquid, there's a little bit of vapor pressure here at the top. And when the vapor pressure here at the top equals the vapor pressure of the surrounding atmosphere, okay, so all of those carbon dioxide molecules and nitrogen molecules and argon molecules and all that other stuff that's in the atmosphere, when the vapor pressure here at the top equals the vapor pressure of the atmosphere, the entire solution has boiled. And that's what the boiling point is. Okay, So the boiling point of water is usually 100 degrees Celsius. But what happens if, now let's say, let's use, what color should we use? Mid, why don't we use magenta? Come here, magenta. Come here, magenta. There you are. Okay, now let's say we have some big solute particle right there and we stick this solute particle right down there in the middle. Blah, there it is. Okay, well what does that solute particle do? Well, it kind of makes sense when you look at it, it's gonna weigh down on those solvent particles. So it's gonna make it harder to become a vapor. Okay? It's also going to get in the middle of these particles making them harder to come together thus decreasing the freezing point as well. So two things happen. The boiling point is what we call elevated. Okay. It goes up for this reason I just showed you, this solute particle, we'll label that solute. It weighs down on those solvent particles. And the freezing point is what we're gonna call depressed meaning the freezing point actually goes down. So this is why you put salt, let's, you know, one example of a solute could be salt. Okay. This is why you put salt in water when you're cooking. It actually elevates the boiling point. So instead of it boiling at 100 degrees Celsius, it might boil 105 degrees Celsius and cook spaghetti or noodles or whatever more efficiently. It's also why you put salt on roads, let's say in Lake Tahoe, when the roads are frozen, it's going to depress the freezing point, making it harder to freeze it. So where it once was a solid at zero degrees Celsius, on a freezing day, the water might still be a liquid because these solute particles are there. So this is really the solute effect. And let's summarize it right here. If you take your solvent, and this solvent is normally water, so let's just pretend it's water. Now it doesn't have to be water. You can dissolve things in alcohols and organic solvents, but let's just say it's water for the sake of this lecture. And it boils at 100 degrees Celsius and it freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Okay. Pure solvent. And we add our magenta, let's color it magenta, just this thing. Okay. We add the solute particle. What happens, what do we create? This is called, and we've learned in this unit, this is called a solution. Okay. And I'm gonna get my magenta, and it's gonna distribute all through there. And this new guy 
it when we took the solute and we put it in the solvent this is called a solution so the solute effect says when you add a solute to a solvent thus creating a solution the new boiling point is going to be elevated so in water's case it's going to be greater than 100 degrees celsius and the new freezing point is going to be depressed that's going to be less than 100 degrees celsius so the key thing now here is really to talk about how much okay so that's what our equations are going to do how elevated okay, and the amount that it becomes elevated we'll call that delta t b okay the change in boiling point or we might say how depressed so how depressed is that freezing point going to be we'll call that delta t f okay and there's two equations they're exactly the same they both equal i times a constant in this case we'll call it kb in this case we'll call it kf this constant is always given to you on a table multiplied by little m so what are these things i is called the vont hoff factor okay and it relates directly to the solute so let's go back to our magenta solute let's say we had a solute and this solute was actually NaCl the I for this would be 2 because there are two things inside that solute that break up when you put it in water Na and Cl let's say that it was CaCl2 it would be 3 because you have one calcium alkali metal but then you have two chlorides so it's three so this I is really just the solute particles or you can think about it as moles of solute particles now an interesting thing happens when you have covalent compounds okay anything covalent so that could be like carbon dioxide or even glucose the i is the van't Hoff factor or i is always one because it doesn't break up when you put it in water like ionic compounds do so just pay attention to that closely. Okay. this kb is a constant and the m is something interesting now remember that we learned that molarity is moles of the solute per total liters of solution so that equaled the solvent and the solute. That's why when we were preparing solutions, we would say things like add enough water to reach a final volume of because the solute was already taking space. Um, this, and remember, this was called molarity. Well, this here, this little guy, this is called molality. And it's very similar. The numerator is the same. It's moles of solute or mole solute and instead of total liters we're going to deal with only the solvent and we're going to measure that in kilograms so it's kilograms of solvent okay so that's what i stands for and that's what m stands for and i told you this was a constant so let's go through and let's try some problems with that okay so let's say we have a solution and that solution is made by taking 46.07 grams of C2H6O. This is ethanol. And we're going to put that in 500 grams of H2O. And the Kb for H2O is 0.52 degrees Celsius per little m. These are the units on Kb. That's for the, the molality term. Okay. So what's really happening here is we're taking this 56.07 grams and we're putting it in the solution so what should we predict we should predict that the boiling point is going to go up and we should predict that the freezing point is going to go down okay. and we know that for water since we're dealing with water here the initial boiling point is 100 degrees celsius and its initial freezing point is zero degrees celsius okay. and this question is actually going to ask us how much is the boiling point elevated okay or we could say what is the new boiling point let's ask both those questions 
So we're going to use the boiling point equation. Delta T B equals I K B molality. So let's go through and let's write out everything. This is what we're looking for. Okay, that's the boiling point elevation. We know that in this case, I is 1 because we're dealing with C2H6O, which is all nonmetals. So that's a covalent compound. KB was given, and I believe I give that to you as 0 0.52. 0 0.52 degrees Celsius per little m. And the molality is moles of the solute, in this case that's C2H6O, divided by kilograms of the solvent, and that's H2O. So let's go through and let's do that calculation here. You have 46.07 grams of C2H6O, and we have 500 grams of H2O. So let's convert this to moles, since it's the solute. Turns out the molar mass, if you get two carbons, six hydrogens and one oxygen, it's actually 46.07 grams in every one mole. So we lucked out, we actually have one mole of solute. So we have one mole of C2H6O. And there are, we know, a thousand or 10 to the third grams in every one kilogram, because it's moles per kilogram, not moles per liter like molarity. So that's 0 0.5 kilograms of water, so 0 0.5 kilograms of solvent. So we have a molality of two, but two little n. So let's go through and solve it. So delta T B equals one, that's I, times 0 0.52 degrees Celsius per molality multiplied by two molality. Look at how nicely these units cancel. And we're going to get a value of 1.04 degrees Celsius. So this is the amount elevated. This is how much it went up. It went up by 1.04 degrees Celsius. So the new boiling point is going to be 100 degrees Celsius plus 1.04, which is going to equal 101.4 degrees Celsius. Okay. The solute particles increase the boiling point by 1.04 degrees Celsius, thus in creating a new boiling point of 101.4 degrees Celsius. Now let's do it the opposite. Let's do a freezing point depression problem. Okay, So let's say we have an aqueous solution. Now when I say aqueous, remember I mean water. So we know that water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius and a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius. And this solution has a molality, so they're making it easy on you, giving you the molality, not the molarity, but the molality. It's annoying when I say that, so I won't say it again. And the solute equals NaCl, okay? So they wanna know Let's predict what's, what happens here, okay? First of all, we know because it's a solution that the boiling point is elevated and we know that the freezing point is depressed. So they wanna know in this problem, how much was the freezing point depressed and what was the new freezing point, okay? So here we did how much was it elevated and what's the new elevation. In this one, we wanna know how much was the freezing point depressed and we'll also calculate the new freezing point. Okay. So we're gonna use our freezing point equation, delta T F equals I K F molality. The change in freezing point is what we're looking for. So I equals two and we know that because the solute is NaCl, and when you put that ionic compound in water, it's gonna break into the alkali metal sodium and the halogen chloride. Kf has to be given, so they actually give you Kf in this problem, and it is 1.86 degrees Celsius molality. I should have given that to you initially. The molality was 0.5. So let's go through and solve it. Delta T F equals 
2 times 1.86 degrees Celsius per molality.